Leading organizations of all sizes use purchase orders to manage and control their spending, and POs are at the core of the spend map system. When it's time to buy products and services, it's super easy to create purchase orders and spend map to keep track of your spending and clearly communicate your requirements to your suppliers. The fastest way to create a new purchase order and spend map is by copying an existing PO or a PO template to save time. All of the details of the original order will carry forward to the new PO and the system will sign the next available PO number or you can enter your PO numbers manually if you prefer. You can make whatever changes are needed and then you can print a copy of your new PO or email the order to the supplier directly from the system. If you're using the optional requisitioning module, new purchase orders can also be built for you automatically from approved requisitions. When there's nothing to copy and you need to create a purchase order from scratch, just click this button and start filling in the fields, selecting from the various master files to reduce data entry and save time. You can also create new purchase orders directly from the supplier and item sections in the main menu. Here, let's create a new purchase order for this computer. All of the item details will default for you, and again, you can modify any of the fields as needed. And here's my completed purchase order that I can print or email to the supplier. If you need to check up on your orders, you can search on any field, and you can save quick searches for instant access to your most important transactions. There's also over 100 reports that you can print or export to Excel for when you really want to dig into the details of your spending by supplier, by department or project, and so on. You can print hard copy purchase orders, or you can send your purchase orders to your suppliers by email. SpendMap comes with a variety of form layouts to choose from, and you can have a custom form designed specifically for your needs through SpendMap client services. Here in PO printing settings, you can adjust various settings that will affect how your PO form will look when printed or emailed. In here, you can select one of the pre-configured form layouts, and you can upload your company logo to appear at the top of the form. And this is where you can set up your electronic signatures, which can optionally be included when your purchase orders are printed or emailed without having to put pen to paper. When purchase orders are processed, SpendMap will automatically include the appropriate user's signature. This would typically be the buyer who created the PO, or you might have a single signature for all orders, like a manager or other person of authority. Finally, this is where you can optionally set up a separate terms and conditions page, which can include legal terms which are too long to include in the body of the form itself. When you modify a purchase order that you've already processed and sent to the supplier, it's called a change order. SpendMap includes a number of features to help you keep track of changes made to purchase orders for audit purposes and to ensure that your suppliers are kept up to date on the changes that affect them. When you modify a processed purchase order, any receipts, invoices, or other transactions related to the PO will remain in place. Other than the supplier and the PO number itself, you can change any of the fields on the PO header or the line item detail screen, including deleting line items and adding new line items as well. For now, let's just change the quantity of this first item. And here's the change order document that goes to the supplier. This form can be customized to your needs, but this standard form includes most of the popular features, including a different title, a revision number after the PO number itself, an indication of which lines have changed, and down here at the bottom, you can see how the changes have affected the value of the order. If I drill into the status of the PO, you can see the current revision number here, and if I drill into the line items, you can see a before and after image of any of the fields that have changed, and you can reprint any version of the PO at any time. In addition to reporting on your spending after the fact, for more proactive spend control, you can optionally set up budgets for your cost centers and GL accounts, and SpendMap will keep track of how much is left in the budget in real time as you enter purchase orders and other transactions in the system. While working in SpendMap, you can see what's remaining in the budget, you can be notified when you're approaching the budget limit, and you can optionally stop users from creating new orders that will exceed the budget. Budgets are set up in the Cost Center master file. 
Just as a reminder, the term cost center is user definable in SpendMap and can be renamed, so you can track your budgets by department, division, project, job, and so on. SpendMap supports time-based budgets as well as overall budgets that span all time. Time-based budgets, such as monthly, yearly, or quarterly budgets, would typically be used if you're tracking your spending by department or other business units. Here, let's take a look at the budget for the marketing department. As you can see, there's around $100,000 budgeted for each quarter, and you can see how much has been spent and how much remains in each quarter's budget. Again, you can have up to 12 budget periods per year, for example if you use monthly or yearly budgets rather than quarterly. By contrast, if we take a look at the budgets for this project, you can see that we have a quarter million dollar overall project that spans all time. You can still see how much is being spent in each quarter, but there's no limit within each time period and we can keep spending against the project's budget, potentially for years, until the overall budget is consumed. While entering purchase orders and other transactions in the system, and when approving requisitions, you can click this link to view the budget details for any cost centers or GL accounts on the order. The hyperlink will be green if the order is within budget, it'll turn yellow if you're approaching the budget limit, and then red if the order will go over the budget limit. And finally, this is where you can set up the budget features, including how many time periods you're using, and optionally prohibit users from processing certain transactions, or perhaps just warn the user if there's not enough remaining in the budget for what they're trying to order.